Christina Signs and Crosswatchers. Welcome to your timeless work, career, vocation reading. I am your reader, fellow Pisces Moon, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short. My initials, that's all. Professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions. Since 1998, almost 25 years in service, author of Words of Grace from a Professional Witch. It's available on Kindle. There is a link in the description box if you would like to preview it for free. Uh, a lot of good stuff in that book. A lot of the prayers and practices that I've done over the decades to help me get where I am today. And while you're down there in that description box, you could also click the link for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Drawing the Circle. I love Patreon so much. Uh, allows me to do all sorts of cool stuff as a professional witch, a mystical artist, a spiritual teacher, and all of that Piscean jazz that I, uh, that magic I weave so well. Uh, really digging it over there. A lot of cool stuff. Members only subscription platform allows all of my subscribers to, for instance, get a daily check-in with an unlisted YouTube live stream link. They get every morning me sitting on the couch. <laughs> they can chat with me, literally, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Chat with me, talking about the day's uh, astrological weather, the magical applications, the spiritual implications, always ending with a little prayer, a little blessing, a little something-something to send us on our way. And it's my favorite way to start the day, even though it rhymes, and I'm getting used to that. Uh, all of my subscribers also get all of the extended readings, the part twos to the part ones here on YouTube. Uh, glad to give all of them that. Right now, we have eight different levels of subscribers at the time of this recording that could change. we got Seekers, Humans, Heroes, Angels, Witches, Immortals, Mystics, Gods, Goddesses is the top tier. They get everything, so there's a spectrum there, a, quite a lovely menu. We're doing some exclusive workshops there, <coughs> the witch archetype, all sorts of cool stuff, as well as they get the advanced stuff that eventually hits YouTube and elsewhere. So uh, come check it out if you want the deeper dive, more magic, more miracles, more mysticism, more mal. Come play Patreon on Patreon, because I'm the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angela Lions. Yeah, but my Mer families just call me Mal. Hey, darlings, ah, oh, my Finn family, my Mer people. Last reading of the series. I hope you don't mind in my bath. I'm in my bathrobe, but I got to be honest with you. My patrons get to see me pretty much every morning in this or another bathrobe. I have like 10 of them. I love bathrobes. I think they're my natural uniform, honestly. Uh, so very, very happy to be serving my fishy family. So uh, let's get down to this. By the way, it's a bathrobe, right? It's not a like dressing gown. It's a bathrobe, bath water, Pisces. Yeah, I try and dress thematically. So what? <laughs> I love being my own boss. Speaking of which, let's talk about your work, career, vocation. This reading is really a life purpose reading, but life purpose is usually kind of huge, right? It's too hard to kind of grasp. What's my life purpose? So we're using three archetypal lenses called the three, len uh, the three levels of power. There is a link in the description box from Carolyn Mace, MYSS. She's a PhD. These are her archetype cards. Uh, a little bit of a lecture about the three levels of power, a way to look at many different aspects and areas of life to kind of break it down so that you can kind of see it in a different way instead of just trying to chew the whole thing at once, right? A little bit. Take human bites, right? Uh, uh, there are chakras involved in all of that. All of the, the extended readings, uh, the, the work, career, vocation reads without extendeds, God forbid, uh, 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 get the basic 12 cards, 13 card spread. The 13th card I choose intuitively, so each sign gets maybe not a different one of all the rest of them, but you know, so you guys, your 13th card for the element of water is the Whispers of Love Oracle. So uh, there are chakras involved, like I said, I'll explain it as I go. It's the last reading of the series, and they always save the best for last because I am a Pisces moon, one would think. But let's not question it. Let's just um, get up in this gig, and I'll explain as I go. And cross-watchers, the uh, cross-watchers are welcome on my channel because you'll get the understanding of what the Pisces you are cross-watching for is going through. Some understanding, some empathy, some sympathy for them, maybe even some support. 
But if you apply some of this to yourself, you will be fulfilling something for yourself in your work, career, vocation. You know, you might be involved. You could be cross-watching for a boss, right? Like, what's going on there, right? Or a co-worker or whatever. So take that all into consideration that you'll get some information that you don't want to use against them. You want to use it for yourself uh, to empower yourself because archetypes are all about alchemy. Uh, the shadow and the light, the lead and the gold. We'll talk about that as it hits the table. Otherwise, let's just get down to it. You all pretty much know what I'm talking about anyway. So both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath if you will. And I will do my best to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace from these 13 cards to help you fulfill your life purpose. Get more out of your work, career, and vocation because it's all one thing. But you can work on each one individually and as you tweak one, the other one shift, which is why you might want to check your other signs, right? Like my moon sign tends to be very dominant in my vocation. Mm, makes sense. My sun sign more my work, but mileage may vary. So uh, the shift from explanation, because you got to do it every single time on YouTube, apparently, to divination, which is my inborn skill written in, uh, that shift happens in the still point. So please take a nice deep breath. And watch my brain hemispheres shift. Still point. And we're ready. Using the Caroline Mace archetype cards. I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Piscean collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers watching this video, receiving this reading. I need three of these cards, please, uh, beloved divine ones. Uh, the dominant archetype in the eighth chakra of their work, their career, and their vocation uh, in that order, but we will read them vocation, career, and work. So what's going on in the eighth chakra of their work, their first level of power, dealing with the physical world, how they survive in the world, survival intuition, lower three chakra dominant, but that's the eighth. Uh, that's sending down the codes to those... Uh, those lower three chakras, second level of power, their career, their passion, their hunger, their thirst, right? Their internal world, what keeps them, uh, you know, moving forward. Their creative intuition, second level of power, heart third, third eye crown, dominant. What's the eighth chakra? Sending down the codes to that. Uh, shifting what they attract and what they repel in their work, career, and vocation, in this case, career, and for their vocation, their spiritual power, their mystical power, their spiritual calling, uh, eighth chakra dominant, visionary intuition, all that eighth chakra stuff going on very much, the Pisces bailiwick. So what's the dominant archetype there for the Pisces collective and or the cross watchers in this timeless work, career, vocation? Read. Oh dear, <laughs> well, 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 well. Now you're pretty brave if you picked up on this reading. Uh, if, you choo if you chose to watch this one, you've got the bully archetype in your vocation. That is an action family archetype. There are nine different families. In your career, you got the vampire. Don't freak, we'll talk about it. That is a wild card family. One of the ones that don't fit in the other eight families. And uh, mirroring it on the other side to an extent, you have the athlete archetype. Also, oh no, that's a creative family archetype. So you got an action family, a wild card, and uh, a creative family archetype. And wow, is this interesting. <laughs> let's, let's get into it. Written on the card is the shadow attribute at the bottom and the light attribute at the top. All archetypes are neutral. Read Sacred Contracts, tons of videos on YouTube. You can tap into the the Caroline Mace PhD, MISS PhD. Uh, I use the language of lead and gold. Lead has three more atoms than gold. Those three atoms cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed, changed, released. So we're all somewhere on a spectrum here from a percentage of lead to gold. This is what fulfilling our sacred contracts is about, is alchemizing it, right? So. Let's have a look see dooksy The lead of the bully, I think you all know, conceals deep fears behind verbal or physical abuse. Now, I am sorry in advance if you ever had to deal with that spiritually, right? Like, think of the bully in different spiritual systems. Well, you better, or else, and if you don't, you get it. 
the light attribute, highlights your tendency to intimidate others. I'm six foot, six foot one of my witch boots, right? Long purple hair. I'm a witch. I wear pentacles everywhere I go. I don't give a fuck anymore, right? So I could be intimidating just by being authentic. But that's not bullying people. I'm a sweetheart. I'm in my bathrobe, okay, on YouTube. I think I'm a sweetheart. At least I think so. Helps you confront the inner fears that bully you. That is really part of the spiritual path, isn't it? Because they're thoughts, right? These fears, that's the lead. I could say, shadow to light, lead to gold, pain to peace, toxic to healthy. Fear to love. Because fear is an absence of love. Just like shadow is an absence of light. You with me? So very, very interesting that there is something actionable here in your mystical spiritual power in terms of your vocation, your life calling, that you might be scared to do. You use a scared, it's okay to be a scared. That's part of the journey. But you might be getting drained in your career if we're talking about the vampire archetype. Now, I will put the link in uh, the comments below to a video I did many, many years ago, a two-hour lecture that I put on YouTube. It was on Vimeo for a while. I put it on YouTube called Vampires and Witches. And uh, it's good. I send it to people, with, you know, when they're like, I, I'm like, here, watch this video before I read you so that we can speak the common language. Uh, and we all know how to defeat and deal with vampires. So let's look at the vampire archetype, the shadow attribute, depleting others for your psychic survival chronic complaining and codependency. Now look with clients, <laughs> you deal with them all the time. I do, it's, and it's necessary to know that because they are drained. However, whether you're drained and then draining is another because the light attribute makes you aware that someone or something is draining your life force. And that could be your workload, right? A vampiric workload, a vampiric corporation, a vampiric boss. A va and if you find yourself as the va vampire, get that when you are complaining when dealing with the ego wounds of codependency and honestly I don't know anybody who doesn't have abuse, neglect, codependence and loss somewhere in their pain structure, ego wounds, right? So, uh, you know, codependency is a form of addiction. It really, really is. Uh, people pleasing and, and all of that. Um, so be aware of that. And it's funny because the vampire is actually covering their throat saying, don't bite me. Don't bite me. Throat chakra, willpower. That's why vampires bite you on the neck. They try and control you by overriding your willpower. So whether you are the drainer or being drained, we can have an archetype, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. I will say, the vampire has come and gone in my life for reasons. Usually when I'm depleted, when I'm tired, other archetypes are always involved. Uh, but in terms of your creative energy, throat chakra is very, this is the heart throat, third eye crown lane, if you will. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. The athlete, however, you do not have to be a literal physical athlete to have the athlete archetype. I have the athlete archetype though I did train as a dancer and I'm very athletic at it still, get this, creative family archetype, shadow attribute, misuse of athletic ability for selfish ends, pretty much sports, uh, false sense of, of invulnerability and entitlement. We can all tap into that. The light attribute, dedication to transcending physical limits, including handicaps, development of personal willpower and strength of spirit. So how, how is that creative? They create their own goals, athletes, right? They, they say, okay, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna work out and I'm gonna train for this. Bodybuilding, I think, is the most obvious, right? To create that body, that shape that they want through really hard work. I do yoga. I'm good. I dance every day. That's enough for me. So I don't mind being slam. It's fine. Uh, for now, we'll see. Um, but development of personal willpower, throat chakra, and strength of spirit, willpower here. Interesting combo here. So if you are being depleted somewhere in your career, know that your work, your survival in the world, there's a creative way for you to do that. It's probably about developing strength of spirit because a vampire can't take energy this way they have to steal it this way so the stronger you are not just physically mentally emotionally spiritually energetically you can pop the tick <laughs> i'm like oh you're gonna try and drain me mm, i start doing silent sanskrit chants in my head to blow them up <laughs> in a good way in a good way 
So this is the most we talk about any of these cards that are going to hit the table because they are the archetypal um, skeleton for your work, career, and vocation. But keep in mind, these are all eighth chakra, right? So all of them are connected in your contracts. So let's get the next four chakras down. Daughters of the Moon Tarot I use to get the next four chakras. Spiritual power, mental power, will, choice, decision power, and emotional power. Um because this is the part that particularly Pisces don't always share, right? That's what's going on behind your eyes. So let's see what the goddesses have to say. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. Still point. And here we go. I call upon my goddesses of water, the sign of Pisces, powers of the West. Please, beloved goddesses of immutable water, changeable water, the ebb and flow of it all. Please, three cards in clarity, face down, work, career, vocation. For the Pisces Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers watching this video, receiving this reading, we'll lay them down, work, career, vocation, but we will read them, vocation, career, work. We've got the athlete in the eighth chakra of their first level of power, work what's under that heart throat third eye crown they got the vampire and their career second level of power this is going to be really key because this is where the throat chakra might be indicated with the vampire in their career and the bully i mean if you're going to have the bully it's really about your how you bully yourself spiritually or have been bullied are you bullying others which can be very draining maybe you are dealing with this in some way shape or form from another the person. So please, my goddesses, clarify that. What's going on? Nope. Thank you. Don't want the wrong card on the table. Leave the right card in my hand for the Pisces Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus Signs, and Cross Watchers watching this video and receiving this reading. Bully in the eighth chakra of their vocation. What's going on in the inside, the inside, the feminine energy ha! Uh, for this timeless well, work, career, vocation, read. I flipped it over because it made me wait. They made me wait long enough. Three of Blades, not the same as the Three of Swords necessarily. Uh, this the keyword is focus. Very third eye dominant card. You got a maiden, a mother, and crone meditating in the desert, apparently in Egypt. They got the Sphinx and the pyramids. I didn't realize they were that close together, honestly. I've been there in this life. I don't know. Do they move things around? Uh, three crystals hovering over their head, focusing on a central cluster, right? Putting their minds together. I would say that's very indicative of the third eye, and this is mental stuff, right? Because what's in, what is it? helps you confront the inner fears that's bullying you. Look, I was raised Catholic, all right? So when the God is called in witchcraft, it was obvious I was a witch. Uh, I really struggled with that, the fear that I would go to hell. Well, been there. I have a rental uh, condo there, if anybody's interested, right by the Fire Lake. And really, for pagans, it's the underworld. It's a little different for us. You know, Tartarus is not the underworld. That's below the, the underworld is Tartarus. And by the way, Tartarus is not a prison. It's a furnace. It transmutes, right? It burns away the lead into gold. So look at your thoughts here. Look at your spiritual thoughts. If it's all up here, it could be true or false. The third eye can only see truth or illusion one at a time. It can't see both, right? It's like seeing through a lens darkly. I just gave you New Testament, right? Or seeing through a lens clearly. Interesting. What are the fears that bully you? Uh, if you were my student, thank the gods you're not, because I'm a bit of a taskmaster as a, as a spiritual teacher, I would say, take a week, write down, record in some way what the inner fears are that bully you, particularly in terms of your spirituality as a Pisces and or cross watcher. Let's see what's going on in that throat chakra. Interesting. I love this for you. Vampire in the eighth, nine of flames, the wanderer. Now the thing about that is, is traditional tarot, you know what I mean, right? Right away, right, like, come near my throat. I'm going to hit you with this wand, right? Uh, the wanderer, not all who wander are lost. You're almost over that hill. And uh, this is a, a Romani uh, woman. Uh, gypsy is what people call it, but I believe Romani is, is the appropriate term and for a, an entire 
race of people. I mean, is race the right word? I don't know. Please forgive me. I'm doing a reading. Uh, nine uh, flames, torches on her her wagon, right? And over... Here, let me get closer. Don't worry, I have pants on. See the sun? Like, that represents that tenth wand. So, uh-oh, the sun's going down, vampire's out. But it does say that you're really almost there. Uh, perhaps you might be conserving your energy to make it through those last nine yards to reach a goal, an element of fire. But in terms of the internal world, this is pretty stable. I mean, it's not a 10. The 10 in this deck is not that exhaustive 10 of wands, but the 10 of flames, the horror uh, in this deck. Let's see what else hits the table, uh, which is done at, you know, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, weddings. It's a dance of celebration. So, you know, look at what's draining you. So just like I said, what are the interferes that bully you uh, in your vocation? What's draining you? Like, look, you don't have to do anything about it immediately because this kind of fire on the inside, I'm going to say throat chakra, willpower. It might just take you saying, I am not there yet. But if they try and bite me one more time, their teeth are going to melt. Mm. Athlete? Oh, Major Arcana, the Empress? The Empress Mawu. Wow. So talk about creativity. When it's a Major Arcana card in a chakric zone, like we're doing Heart Third, Third Eye Crown, the way I read, uh, this is all four of them. I would say heart dominant, but it's the Empress, right? It's the Empress card, Mawu. So this is the Divine Feminine card with a very powerful creative family archetype kind of shifting the codes around there for you to what? It's right here. Development, right? What happens with a baby? What do they call them? The, 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 the zygote, whatever. I forget the right word. The embryo. Sorry. I know I got a Pisces duel. I got a lot of Pisces duelas in my life. One in particular. Hi, Shannon. Uh, she just went, ah! Um, uh, you know, it's, it's the process of development, right? So it's like you're giving birth. You're gestating. You're creating inside of yourself this really, really strong, abundant, divine, feminine alignment that is the mother in this uh, tarot deck. The high priestess is the maiden, Mawu is the mother, well, Isis is the priestess as the maiden, uh, Mawu is the mother, and the Kaliach uh, as the hermit, the crone in this deck. So I like this. I like this. You're probably stronger than you realize, um, but keep an eye on that that entitlement thing. It's one of the deadly sins, entitlement, but also in vulnerability, right? We all have our vulnerabilities, um, inner and outer, but with that kind of goddess energy on the inside, divine feminine, I think you'll be fine, and I think you're going to be creating, uh, at least in your work, from a much more, more unconditionally loving, uh, nurturing kind of abundant vibe there, which is really good for money, just saying. All right, that's the inner. Let's look at the outer. Mythic Tarot gives us the lower three chakras, the yang, the masculine. Looking at yourself from the outside in, like a mirror, or you from the inside out. Both can be true, by the way. Looking at other people, places, and things, because lower three chakras are about relationships in the physical world. And this one is lower three chakra dominant, but will be the last three that we, the last of the three that we turn over. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. As I call upon my gods of water, sign of Pisces, powers of the West, please, beloved gods of mutable water, dolphin and shark, but technically neither one of those are fish. Please, one card in clarity. Dolphin? A shark's a fish. Dolphin's not. It's a mammal. Please, thank you. <laughs> Spirit guides of oceanography and whatever. <laughs> Please, one card in clarity each for the Pisces Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers. They got the athlete in the eighth chakra of their work with the Empress Mawu, the Divine Mother, on the inner. There's the outer. They got the vampire in their career with the Wanderer, the Nine of Flames, which I'm still getting that image of the 
Don't you mess with me, sucker. I will stake you with this wand so fast. And we got that bully in the crown chakra. Sorry, in the eighth chakra of their spiritual power, their vocation with three of blades on the inner not saying that this is all just in your head, but that there needs to be a little bit more incisive focus here. What's going on? Lower three chakras. Oh, wow. In this timeless work career vocation read, Bully in the Eighth, Three of Blades on the inner third eye. Well, how about Three of Wands on the outer solar plexus I've ever, I saw it, pay attention to your solar plexus. Because if you're thinking, oh no, if I do this, I'm going to be punished by the divine in whatever way, shape, or form, check your solar plexus. And if it's going, it means it's not really the truth of who you are. It's a belief. It's a conditioning, something you picked up along the way. Uh, solar plexus is boundaries, honor code, personal power, who you want to be in the world. And of course, it is an evaluation. Well, you go through the ace and then you get to the deuce. The three is like, okay, I've got a solid foundation here. It is, it is sure, waiting for your ships to come in, but it's really about loyalty. So are you going to trust your personal power? Are you going to trust what your gut says as a Pisces in terms of bullying yourself? And if you are dealing with a spiritual bully in your life, honey, it happens more often than people realize. Well, I guess you just didn't do the spell right. Right? Oh, I guess you didn't do enough yoga. Well, you better otherwise fill in the blank, right? Like a real mad, mad lib. So, you know, this, this is a general read for you. I will tell you, I didn't realize I was bullying people spiritually that I intimidate others because I see myself as a divine goofball. I'm a Dionysus archetype. But yeah, he could be a little bullying, you know making mothers eat. Yeah, just read the Baha'i. You'll see what I mean. It's a tough cookie, that one. Great grapes, though. Uh, vampire in the eighth. The Wanderer. Nine of Flames on the inner. High Priestess on the outer. Honey, don't you dare offer them your neck. Soft of eye and light of touch. Speaky little listen much, my witchy poos. This is Persephone underground. No longer the Maiden of Spring or the Lady of Summer, but wife of Hades in the underworld. Between two pillars as usual, a light pillar and a dark pillar. Now, just kind of look at my set here. Do you see it? Do you see it? Of course you see it. You're a Pisces. Very much a Pisces card. Um, look, she represents the middle pillar. <laughs> go Kabbalistic for a hot second, right? That is that direct line from the eighth chakra all the way to the root and lower, lower. Uh, but secrets, right? Keep your mouth shut for this stuff and pay attention to your lower three chakra intuition. Intuition is a weird thing because we have so many thoughts about it, but it's really not thought oriented. Yes, every chakra has its own intuitive voice. Clairvoyance certainly for me is the intuitive voice of my third eye, which might show up there in your vocation, because this is all one thing that we're breaking into parts, right? But it is that silence and that stillness. There's this Matcon healing mantra card. You're going to get three of them, one for each. I don't know if it's going to show up, um, but it, uh, the mantra is my intuition flows whenever I am still. Okay, so stillness, not necessarily physical stillness, but that internal stillness, though I would say the high priestess does not run around much, you know, you know what I mean? And I love Persephone. She's one of my favorites. Her and I are very, very close in all sorts of ways. So there is wisdom there. There is insight. There is intense psychic power. And it is, come on, a Pisces card, the high priestess. All right. So I, I kind of feel bad for anybody trying to vampire you. <laughs> They're going to have to drink the ocean if they try. Uh, okay, athlete in your work. Mawu Empress on the inner. <gasps> oh, I'm so happy. This could be a person, though. The King of Pentacles, our only court card uh, in uh, this read. This is the last tarot card down. We're going elsewhere after this. The Capricorn card, King of Pentacles. Uh, 
really talk about the Midas touch. Uh, Capricorn, 10th house, highest potential, slow and steady wins the race. This doesn't have to be necessarily a Capricorn person in your life, but I would say it's somebody who's very hardworking, who might, it might take them a long time to get things done, but it gets done right. Uh, the symbol for Capricorn is the mountain, obviously the mountain goat for Capricorn, but cardinal earth, creative earth, uh, so think of how much or how much is created in a mountain, right? That we can't see. How much lives on the mountain, right? What grows because of the mountain with shade and sun and all of that. Very creative, but none of it happens like this. So I'm going to say your creativity on the inner here, right? This this. I mean, I'll show you the card. She's literally giving birth to a baby on the back of an elephant. I didn't draw the card, but there it is, right? So to have this, catch it, if you will. Shannon must be like, oh my. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, uh, look, I would say for the doula who I know is probably watching this, I would say you've got more skills than you realize here and more strength than you realize, and you're not done, <laughs> right? But it's going to take an athletic effort for you to create and move this in the direction you want to in your work. And I would say, to borrow a colloquialism, ka -ching. If this is you from the outside uh, looking in at yourself. But but there might be somebody, eh, it doesn't have to be an earth sign even, could, I, I, I guess could also be an institution, a corporation, a company, an industry, uh, if it's root chakra, because it's that element of earth. But it feels really stable and really strong. The only one I have to say that feels a little tricky is, uh, but even that doesn't feel as tricky. Dealing with that vampire, it feels like you're pretty girded, you know? And the best thing about wooden stakes is that they work on, you know, mortals, too. So if you have some left over, that's from Terry Pratchett. <laughs> Carpe jugulum. <laughs> I love that book. I just listened to it a couple of days ago. So uh, interesting dynamic we have here on the table. And, you know, I often see myself in my readings. I just know if anybody fucking tries to vampire me, I'm going to blow them up. Because vampires can't receive energy this way. They have to steal it this way. It's in the lore. It's in Vam It's actually in Bram Stoker's Dracula, the movie, right? Uh, well, I mean, I know he wrote the book, but, right? He cursed God, cut himself off, and so had to feed horizontally instead of, instead of high priest. Honey, draw down. Draw down. Draw down the moon. Draw, draw down the sun. <laughs> Blow him up. Dude, they sure done blowed up good. <laughs> Okay, I love this. I love this. And honestly, anybody who tries to vampire me in my career, good luck. I've been doing this way too long. I have developed a little something I call TNS, Teflon Neck Syndrome. This shit slides right off. Let's get you some healing mantras, one each. And each one will help heal the individual, but then you put them all together and it heals the life purpose. Isn't that cool? Please take a nice deep breath. I've been doing these readings for clients for decades. Still point. They're sort of the easiest for me. Hmm. There you are. I call upon the Ascended Masters of Life Purpose through the archetypal lenses. The three levels of power, <coughs> excuse me, of work, career, and vocation. Yeah, I get the throat chakra thing. I get it. I get it. You need to spit something out. You might have to say something to somebody at some point about that vampire. So, my beloved Ascended Masters, one card each for the Pisces Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers, the perfect healing mantras to help them fulfill their life purpose through their work, career, and vocation, how they survive, how they create, and how they live their calling. I'm not going to look at these, so I'm going to do my best. Leave the perfect cards in my hand. They've got the athlete in the eighth of their work with Mawu, the Empress, on the inner, not looking, and King of Pentacles on the outer in their career, not looking. The, hmm, this Actually, this bathrobe does that really well. In their career, they got the Vampire in the eighth, Nine of Flames on the, um, on the inner, which is the Wanderer. I get that. They're almost at their goal, which is usually when vampires do tend to swoop in, actually in those last nine yards. But they got Persephone on the outer. I mean, if they are being drained by a priestess, 
with the spiritual bully. Wow, that would make sense too, how that's affecting their career. But if this is them from the outside looking in, they really have a power. They really have the ability to channel some serious power here. So what's their healing mantra for that one? This might be their leverage. Uh, and for their vocation, they got bully in the A three of blades on the inner, three of fl uh, three of wands on the outer. Their perfect healing mantra, please, for their vocation. Here we go. Ah, ha, ha, ha. The bully in the A, three of blades on the inner, three of wands on the outer, invoking self-realization. Each breath confirms how awake I already am. Don't worry about the divine. It is literally your breath. Prana, mana, spirit, chi, Reiki. We call it all these different things, but there's only one life force. So the divine spirit, like inspiration, respiration, all inside of you. So don't worry about, you know, uh, 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 so much about those fears. They are conditioning. They are not endemic to the truth of who you are, ever. Not as a soul, not as a spirit. As a, a personality on a hero's journey, sure. And as a human ego, yeah, everybody's got that. Except the Dalai Lama, we always cut him slack because he's the Dalai Lama. <laughs> uh, but your breath, I highly recommend breath work to transcend thoughts. Rebirthing, Wim Hof breath. I combine Wim Hof breath and Ho'oponopono, the Hawaiian problem solving technique, and I just call it Wim Ho, and it works. I do it before every reading. You should see what I do before every reading. So that I give you the best that I got, and I can leave it on the table and then go take a nap. So in your vocation, you are invoking. Uh, self-realization in your career you got the vampire wanderer on the inner Persephone high priestess on the outer deconstructing doubts only my beliefs are in the way so look look at the people and the things the people places and things in your life that are drowning you and get out of the head and into your lower three chakras only my beliefs are in the way but how does it feel down here? You can't see it down here, but it is down there, right? Those lower three chakras, you have more power and intuition than you may realize. Because here's a little trick. Here's a little vampire. See, the light, the gold vampire archetype is either the vampire hunter or the vampire slayer, depending upon whether you want them in your life or not. Right? The vampire hunter, if you don't, the vampire healer, if you do, right? Slayer or healer, the choice is yours. Like family members, you can't necessarily do that with. But trust me, listen to your second chakra. So if you're feeling, you're talking to somebody and you're just feeling yourself kind of, you know, do that, just take a moment. Say, I'm going to go to the potty for a minute. Excuse me, I'm going to reapply, right? Go to the bathroom, sit down if you can, and just ask your second chakra, is this person vampiring me? And if it goes, mm -hmm, then the answer is yes. Do they mean to be doing it? Chances are the answer is going to be, uh, uh they don't know they're doing it. Most vampires are unconscious. It's pain. They're coming from lack, right? So whatever your thoughts are about this, only your beliefs are in the way. No one can drain the ocean. <laughs> Draw down, you know. Definitely Tiffany Aching series, Winter Smith, Terry Pratchett. Everything I needed to know about witchcraft that I really needed to learn about witchcraft, I learned from Terry Pratchett. Discworld novels, and I will never recant on that. But let's look at the athlete in your work, right? Ma Wu, Empress on the inner, King of Pentacles on the outer, embodying my soul. I have a right to be excited, and yes, you do. Do you dare let anybody take your excitement from you? Because you are, what does it mean to embody the soul? Okay, quickie. You are a divine higher self who manifested an immortal soul to have a hero's personality, a personality on the hero's journey, with a human ego and a physical body. Well, embodying the soul means taking that immortal part of you and grounding it into physical form. So this athlete is probably not about track and field, although you do you, right? <laughs> probably not, but it is about being a mystical athlete, allowing your soul power. You can't kill that which is eternal. You can't even drain it. It's like, I don't know. I can't come up with a better metaphor than trying to swat to drain the ocean. 
but it is also trying to show, throw shadows at the sun. If someone's trying to take you out of your soul position, oh, you can let them. But with Divine Mama on the inner, I don't think you're gonna. And look, if this is all just about money, the prostitute archetype would have showed up there if this was just about money. Uh, don't absolutely keep your strength. Do not compromise uh, your your integrity uh, for comfort, your faith for comfort. I don't see that here. I think that you might very, very well be excited about a breakthrough in your work, how you survive in the world, how you pay your bills, but there might be somebody in your career or something in your career draining you from that that is making you consider some thoughts in your head about your life calling and your spirituality that are not true. Just have to be in the present moment and breathe. So, how do you heal your vocation? Align that if that's the one you want to work on first, invoking self-realization. Each breath confirms how awake I already am. Thank you very much in your career. How you do that, deconstructing doubt. Only my beliefs are in the way and how you heal your work here situation is embodying your soul. I have a right to be excited. Now, you want to do life purpose. You achieve your life purpose, as far as this timeless read goes, by, by knowing that each breath confirms how awake I already am, spiritually awake, and only my beliefs are in the way, and no one can drain me unless I let them, right? And I have a right to be excited. You put those together. Each breath confirms how awake I already am, only my beliefs are in the way, which are element of air, both of those, and I have a right to be excited. That's freeing. That's alchemy, and I love it. I love this read. Eh, I'll see how it applies to my life in the next couple of days. Yeah. Last card down. No bookie book for any of these. Can you imagine? The new people are like, what the fuck's a bookie book? It's, it's like a nookie nook. It's a long story. The bookie book. Um, the Whispers of Love Oracle by Angela Hartfield. I love this deck. And this can turn the party. We're taking a risk. It has romance cards in them. Uh, but there are no womp womps. There are womp womp. None of those in the Whispers of Love Oracle. But this one is dedicated, I'm going to say to your higher self alone, not the higher self of all involved. Because this is really about you. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. As I call upon the higher selves of the Pisces Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers, watching this video, receiving this reading, uh, uh, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, higher selves, what is the whisper of love? The piece of information, inspiration, insight needed for the Pisces and the Cross Watchers to alchemize their shadow to light, their lead to gold, the pain to peace, the toxic to healthy, to poverty, to prosperity, perdition to paradise, hell to heaven, drained to no longer drained, uh, however that plays itself out, your guidance, your grace, your love, your wisdom, your power, for the Pisces Collective and the Cross Watchers in this timeless read. Back to what you love. Your current situation is giving you an opportunity to evaluate what you want. And believe me, if in your career you make a choice or a decision or even contemplate a choice and decision that a vampire does not want you to leave, you have to take the opportunity at least to evaluate what you want because if it's not what they want they will try to control you I'm seeing that particularly in your career but I also think here with the bully uh, three blades three of wands each breath confirms how awake I already am it might even be you reevaluating your relationship with the divine because there's always a higher truth um, I mean I was raised with God the father and then I found goddess the mother and then I realized above that is the great unity <laughs> the, the nameless Tao, the pregnant void, source right, genderless entirely so there's always a higher level of truth, until we are all one no place like Om, there's no place like Om until then you are uh, given plenty of opportunities to pull back as a Pisces and really tune in but I wouldn't do it just mentally, right? Your, your, your current situation is giving you an opportunity to reevaluate. That is very much not just a mental process, right? It's not an estimate for a house or a car. It's really like, what do I want? I want a better relationship 
with the divine. I don't want to scare myself. I want a better relationship with myself because I'm doing the best that I can. And also, I have to say, three of wands, what are you willing to wait for? Solar plexus, you're being given an opportunity to reevaluate what you want in your work, career, and vocation. So, for me, this would be very much a Pisces moon read. That would be very dominant there. Because those thoughts that bully us are not just our own. Thoughts are things, like cell phone waves, whatever you want to call them, in the air that are in there until you, they are received, right, by the antenna. So, keep an eye on that. I think. You might be waiting for some stuff to come through here, but don't beat yourself up by thinking you did something so wrong, or not just in this life, but another life, where you're being punished. It's not how it works. You're punishing yourself, and that makes you vampire bait like that. Yeah, as soon as you drop in energy. Because if you fly too high, a vampire can't bite you. Right? You're flying in the sunlight? They can't. they got to get you when you're down, and, well, you know... And the economy, right? They'll start complaining at you until there's like one drop of blood. They'll leave you one drop of blood left so that you can regenerate more and then they come back, right? It's sort of like a drive through So let's put this together with a blessimation. If you're new, it's a combination of blessing and summation. Uh, I do them for real. Prayer is my main skill, I think. So uh, let's see what comes out of my mouth. And then after that, I will release you all from my cell tissue and my energy field by allowing any dolphin goofy left in my soul to clear the path so that I can go take a nap. I'm already dressed for it. Please take a nice deep breath. No nip slip. I'm good. Still point. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Here we go. <clears throat> I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Pisces collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers watching this video, receiving this reading. May they be blessed with all that they need in their vocation to highlight their tendencies to intimidate others and help them confront the inner fears uh, that bully them by bringing the focus into the third eye and examining the thoughts and evaluating if that's what they really want, if that's what they're going to wait for, if that's their loyalty system. For me, it's God first, then me, then friends and family, then work, Jan Le Van Zant in the meantime, brilliant book. But all they have to do is invoke their own self-realization, each breath confirming how awake they already are. And in their career, may they be blessed by being more aware if someone or something is draining their life force, maybe by keeping their, their nine of wands moving forward, yet girded, protected, throat chakra. You bite me, you're going to burn with that Persephone high priestess energy, that stillness. My intuition flows whenever I am still. And certainly taking the clues, the cues, the, the intuition from the lower three chakras if they are being drained by someone or something in the outside world while they deconstruct out. Because only their beliefs are in their way. Like, I can't leave this situation. Yeah, 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 you can. Just may not be... Well, leave the situation if you need to is simple, not easy. Uh, particularly, they can develop the strength here. May they be blessed with all that they need uh, with the athlete in their work, uh, highlighting their dedication to transcending physical limits, including other people, <laughs> including handicaps, uh, developing their personal willpower and strength of spirit. Bite me, you're going to fry, particularly with the goddess, right around that third chakra. All four of them, but really, it's like you're going to bite all of nature. Good luck. You're going to explode, vamp. Uh, because if this is them from the outside looking in at themselves, they're good. They're slow and steady wins the race. Capricorn vibe. But they have everything they need. And uh, they have a right to feel excited. So may they be given all that they need. Uh, to embody their soul into the physical body because that's real hard to drain because they have a right to be excited and may they do all of this taking the time taking the space, taking the rest and taking the breath that they need to get back to what they love for they, uh, this current situation is giving them an opportunity to reevaluate what they truly want in their life purpose, in their work career and vocation and all that jazz 
and may they be blessed with the guidance, grace, love, wisdom, and power to swim and surf and dive as needed, to be the best that they can be, to fulfill their sacred contracts, their role in the ineffable plan, which is better than anything we can imagine or conceive here in the video game called Humanity on planet Earth, for their well-being, for a more peaceful planet, for a health, happier, healthy healthier, wealthier, wiser world for their well-being and for the well-being of all. And with harm to none, even the vampire, they can't help it, they don't know. As we will it. So let it be done. So let it be. And so it is. Aw, oh, I love you, my fishy family. Mer, my mer people. This is a good read. Feels like some of y'all are in the spiritual industry like moi. Yeah. So good luck. Really, seriously, comment if you like. Hit the thumbs up if it clicked. Helps other people find the video. That's all it does. I'm no longer monetized on YouTube. Because I'm over on Patreon. And I love it. The best freaking career move I ever made. And rumor has it they're going to add a free subscription button to it so people can join in. And they would get the daily check-ins, but not the extendeds or anything else. They're going to have to move up the menu for that. Why? Because I'm the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angela Lions, and I have been in the New Age metaphysical pagan spiritual magical community industry since I'm like 19 years old. I am 54. Yeah, I know I don't look at things. Susie thought I was going to get away without doing that. No, 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 not at all. So uh, if you want the deeper dive, I'm serious. I am a field day. I'm a pool party. I'm a day at the beach over on Patreon.com. So come Patreon on Patreon. And I freaking love your guts, Pisces. And uh, if you want a private reading, I've been doing work career vocation reads for clients for decades since I learned about the three levels of power from Caroline Mace, M-Y-S-S, Ph.D., back in the 90s, and I've helped a lot of people not necessarily become billionaires, but bring their work career vocation into alignment, uh, alignment for a more sense of life purpose. So, uh, link in the description box, video, booking a reading with Mal explains everything you ever wanted to know about booking a reading with Mal, but we're afraid to ask. Otherwise, I love you. Uh, Pisces, we're the collective unconscious as we heal. Everybody heals. So don't let nobody drain you. And if you really have problems, you reach out to me. I got plenty of spells. Carry a clove of garlic as a reminder. Talk about an amulet, an helium amulet. Oh, it sounds like a band or a drag queen. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Hang in there, my beloved fishies. Heal, hell, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.